Hi, in this short video, we will learn what is the difference between four built-in variables related to page information in Google Tag Manager. We will compare page URL, hostname, page path, and referrer variables, and look at the example output and possible use cases. You might have seen one or multiple of these variables in different GTM setups, and maybe you had some questions, for example, how does page path differ from page URL or when you should use it? So hopefully in this video, we will clarify all of those questions with the help of examples. And the best way to take a look at what values are available in each of those variables is by using a GTM preview mode. I will enable my GTM preview mode to show what values are reported in different scenarios. So if you click on the preview button on the right top corner, and Google Tag Manager will offer you to connect to one of your website URLs. In my case, uh, it's a URL with a longer path and some additional parameters so that uh, examples make sense. But you can as well use your uh, homepage to see what values you get there. So once you click connect, you should see a Tag Assistant pop-up being shown in the right bottom corner. This means we are connected to the preview mode. And if you go to Tag Assistant tab, you will see all of the events uh, that are reported to Google Tag Manager. And if you haven't seen that before, this is basically the place where we can see all the tags that are being fired and debug our setup before we publish it live. Uh, but it is also a great place to preview uh, variable values as well. So let's click on any of the events that we have here. I will select, for example, window loaded and go to the variable section. In the variable section, scroll down to our page related variables. You can see we have page hostname, path, URL and refer. And here we can see what values are available for each of the variables for given URL that I have here. So let's take a look at what values we have here and then actually take a look at some examples in actual GTM setups. So first we have page hostname. As you can see, it reports my website domain here, which is easysegment.com. Uh, in your case, if you're previewing your website, you should see your domain name here. So basically from the whole URL that I see in my browser window, only the domain name will appear as this variable value. So it could be useful if you are using the same container on multiple uh, websites or multiple domains to trigger your tags uh, only on specific domain. You could also use that uh, in lookup tables to load different tracking IDs for a specified domain and you can do all of that by using a page hostname variable and we will take a look at that in a minute. Then we have page path so probably you have seen this variable quite a lot. This is basically a path to the page that you're currently seeing uh, in the browser. So in my case I had a category page for Google Tag Manager and uh, this variable will report everything that comes after my domain name and until any additional parameters that are added to the URL. So I have here uh, example parameter GTM debug and some URL fragment, which is also not reported in the page path. So this variable will take everything in the middle. And for example, if I go over to any of the articles, uh, it will report anything that I have here after the host name. So if I go back to tag assistant, uh, on the new page, click any of the events like window loaded. I should see my page path change to this one. So the same value that we have here after our domain name. So in most of the setups where you need to target the page, most likely you will uh, use page path because it will contain all necessary information to trigger a tag on specific site section. Now let's take a look at the page URL. As you can see, it is uh, quite similar to page path. However, we have some additional information here. So we can see our protocol and the domain name. 
In addition to that, we can see page path as well. So we can see which section we are viewing on specified domain name. And if we would have here additional query parameters, we would see those here as well. So let's go back to the first URL that I have shown you. Let's reload the page and take a look again at Tag Assistant. So you can see now that uh, page URL reports same protocol domain name page path that we have here. And additionally, it has GTM debug attribute available as well. So basically, if we look at the URL again, everything from this part to the URL fragment will be available in page URL. Currently, page URL will not include the URL fragment by default. If you would like to use the URL fragment in your setup, you can extract it using a custom variable. To learn more, check a link in the description. So by default, page URL will contain anything except the URL fragments. So I have those parameters, I have page path and domain, and any of those will be available under page URL. So for example, if you have pages that have exactly the same page path, but they have different attribute or parameter passed in the URL and you want to target those pages, you would use page URL and provide that as a condition for your trigger. If you don't have those, then it would make sense to use just the page path variable. And the last one that we have in our list is a referrer variable. So this variable is a bit different from the three that we have just reviewed in a sense that uh, it doesn't show anything that we have available in the URL per se but it shows information about where user came from to the existing page. So we would see here referring domain or page URL where visitor came from before uh, viewing this page. So for example, here I can see that uh, my refer is tagassistant.google.com, which is because I have enabled preview mode and I have entered the website from tagassistant tool. If, for example, I would visit my website from a Google organic search or from some other third party website, then I would see here a domain name for this particular website, for example, google.com. Note that if you would click on another page from your website, let's click on this article and take a look again at Tag Assistant for this page you would see your own page for the referrer because you have entered uh, this particular page from this site section. You will not use referrer value very often, but it is useful to know that you can get a referring website or the source of the visitor from one of the default variables. For example, when needed, you could trigger some events for users who have entered the website from Google Organic or maybe trigger some pop-up for visitors who have seen your promotion page in the previous interaction. Now, let's take a look at some simple examples of how those variables would be used in your GTM setup. So in most cases, you would use those variables in a trigger configuration. So for example, if you would select a trigger type page view and select some page views, and by using any of the variables like hostname, path, or URL, you could limit when the tag is fired. For example, if I would have multiple hostnames or multiple domains where the same container is used, I would just provide uh, additional conditions like page hostname contains my domain. And then this trigger would be active only on the provided domain name, even if GTM container is being used on multiple websites. You can do the same for the page path and page URL. In case of page URL, you could actually target visitors who have a specific parameter attached. So for example, if you have, let's say, uh, same URL for multiple pages, but the parameter is different. For example, you have checkout with multiple steps and your steps are reported in additional attribute. So you could use, for example, uh, checkout step equals two to target a uh, second step of your checkout using this kind of trigger. 
And of course, the same goes for the referrer. If you would like to target uh, people coming from a specific domain, for example, Google, uh, then you could use a similar configuration to determine the channel where users came from. Note that this information will be available only on the initial landing page. After that, you will see your own domain URL as a referrer. You can use any of the page-related default variables almost in any GTM event, since this data is available as soon as GTM is loaded. Here we have an example of a page view trigger, but we could use them in custom events, window loaded, scroll depth triggers, etc. As you can see, it is very simple to use those variables in a trigger, so let's take a look at how to reference them in another variable. One of the most common examples when you might need to reference page variables would be a lookup table. Let's say your GTM container is added to multiple domains and you want to collect events for different websites or website sections in their own properties in Google Analytics or Facebook or Hotjar, etc. So you could of course create a new tag for each domain and create a new triggers per each website, but to save some time and avoid unnecessary duplication, you could use the lookup table variable and provide page hostname or page URL as your input value. So in this example, to return a different tracking ID or pixel ID for each website or site section, I just have to list them in the lookup table and provide them as an output values to a corresponding domain name. Then I can reference this variable in my tracking tag to use dynamic ID based on the domain. So let's say I would create a Google Analytics configuration tag. And uh, in order not to create multiple tags, I would use my lookup table that would output dynamic uh, tracking ID based on the domain that I have visited and just use a generic all pages trigger and that's it. So this would work for multiple domains. Even if I create like 10 of those, it would fetch a correct tracking ID based on the host name that I have visited. So this is another example how you could use one of page variables in your tracking configuration. Of course, these are just basic examples, but those should give you an understanding of how you could utilize those for your own use cases. So in this short video, we have learned what is the difference between these four page related variables. And hopefully this gives you some understanding of what values you should expect and when you can use them. Thank you for watching. And if you found this information useful, please leave a like and subscribe for more similar videos related to Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. See you soon.